Before we get into this episode of questions from subs, I gotta give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, Davion and Derek. Appreciate uh, the both of y'all. Uh, if any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. Or if you want to become a channel member, uh, you can hit the join button. Uh, and either is all, of course, optional. If you do, great, cool, we love you. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Great, cool, we still love you. So, the first question came from a patron, my guy Serge. He said, the pressure is... Is on well engraving. I feel bad. I only ever ask questions when we're losing, but right now we're all frustrated and looking for answers. I'm writing this just hours after our embarrassing loss to the four and seven Jaguars. Oh yeah, so he updated their record when he wrote this. Now, of all the games played today, almost every team with a winning record won their games. Although prior to this game, the Ravens won four games in a row. I can't help but feel the tension within the Ravens community. We've dealt with years of frustration over the team's philosophy, a lack of a productive passing game. Multiple starters being injured, drop passes, overthrown passes, blown coverages, and much, much more. Though these are issues that are normal with other teams, it seems especially prevalent with our Ravens. We're nearing the end of the season, still dealing with issues we had the first half of the season, and they don't seem to be getting any better. The NFL is a business, and it all, as it all goes with businesses, when business isn't going good, someone must pay. So my question to you is, who do you think will be the scapegoat, and when will they be dealt with? With much love from the A. Shout out to Surge. Um, it depends on how the Ravens handle this thing. If uh, if Bashadi or EDC, if they approach Harbaugh and be like, look, hey, I, I don't think they're going to, but if they be like, look, hey, this something's got to give. We need answers. Harbaugh <laughs> gonna be like, hey, I, I don't call the offense. It ain't, it ain't me. I don't call defense either. I'm here to motivate and lead these guys. But you, you go look at Greg Roman and Mike McDonald. So um, I, I think that uh, I, I could see it, if, if as far as you're talking about scapegoat, I could see that getting put on um, somebody like Greg Roman. But again, we keep saying it, man. Greg Roman is much deeper than just Greg Roman. It's all philosophy. It's all what you value as a team, as an owner, as a GM, as a head coach. Everything trickles down, but it starts at the top. Get rid, of, get rid of Greg Roman, yeah, a lot of fans going to be happy. Oh, yeah, woohoo, great. But they still going to have the same philosophy. It's going to be the same. And they, hey, they've been winning a lot of games in regular season with that philosophy, but, well, you know the rest. Now, and you talked about um how we've dealt with years of frustration over the team's philosophy, a lack of productive passing game. So you said it yourself, years it's been years of frustration with the Ravens passing. Years. This is nothing new. So it's the same issues. Different players have come and gone. Different offensive coordinators have come and gone. It's the same thing, my friends. Uh, multiple starters being injured. With that part, I mean, <laughs> don't ask their uh, don't ask their wolf about that part. But um, as far as the injuries, I I I can't be mad at somebody for getting hurt. I know some oh Steve Saunders, da, da, da. but I mean the injuries. I I I don't I can't get mad at people because stuff happens. Stuff happens. Uh, you you ask Derek Wolf, he won't just say stuff happens. He said there's a reason behind it. He said the way the Raven, but who, who knows? But anyway, um, drop passes. Well, that's execution. Overthrown passes. Well, that's execution. Blown coverages and much much more. Um, blown coverages. That's a bit of both coaching and execution um, Because with the uh, blown coverages There's sometimes when It's like they'll have certain guys on islands it's like, And hey, timing is everything You know what's funny? Um, on Oh, on a Thursday game The Giants were playing Oh, the Cowboys And somebody was saying Oh man, I think it was Shannon Sharp But somebody was saying Oh man, uh, why, why is uh, Wink Martindale Playing this kind of defense and oh oh there you go. Shannon Sharp said, Why would Giants defensive coordinator play all this man coverage with your starting two DBs out? That's dumb coaching. And guess who quote tweeted that with a laughing emoji and put a little a little, a little recycle, uh well not recycle, but the arrows just going in a circle. Basically saying, Oh, it's the same old stuff. And a laughing emoji. It was Patrick Queen. It's Patrick Queen. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so three days later. Guess what that Ravens defense did? The 
same thing. Uh, that that Ravens defense that that had been playing great for these past couple of games. Well, what happened? So he he over there laughing at Wink, and now Wink is laughing at them. But anyway, um, with the the the, the defense in this game, uh it, oh the the blown coverages and just assignment miss assignments and just putting guys in bad positions. Um, now again, recently they haven't been doing it. But in this game, especially the situation, if it was just random play or something like that, but the situation, the situation. Now, Marcus Peters, he had a rough game execution. But then with Brandon Stevens, it was the two-point play. Like, Jaguars were like, we ain't scared of no little Ravens, man. So they were going for two. Brandon Stevens on an island. And Brandon Stevens was on an island, and you, you had just called a timeout. You had just called a timeout. So, but, and you had Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters on the same side. And maybe they were like, oh, you know what, Marcus Peters, he's he been struggling. You know what, let's put Marlon Humphrey on, there, on this two-point conversion play. But you had them two on the same side. And you, had, you had Brandon Stevens all on an island by himself. By himself. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? That's coaching right there. That's coaching. That reminds me of the, 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 the Jalen or Moore Davis part. Um, or Jalen Armour Davis, excuse me, on um, Tyreek Hill in that Dolphins game. Like... Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of the same issues, man. So who do you think it should be? If, if it's a lot of the same stuff happening, a lot of players are coming and going. But it's a lot of the same stuff happening. Who do you think it should be? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. Ain't no chance what I mean. Next question came from another patron and came from Izana. He said, hello, Engraven. Hope your day is going well and thanks in advance for taking my question. Uh, after hearing your thoughts on DuVernay's lack of targets, I decided to do some digging and find what the target shares are. So, here's some of the numbers. Mark Andrews has 70, 72 targets on 273 passing snaps, so 26%. DuVernay uh, has 39 targets on 197 snaps, 20%. DuVernay has 32 targets on 255 passing snaps, 12%. Bateman has 28 targets on 127 passing snaps, 22%. And likely has 30 targets on 178 passing snaps 16 percent Ooh, them numbers just making me go crazy man um though duvernay has taken the second most passing snaps uh 58 more snaps than the third he has the lowest target share with all that being said i don't see the ravens keeping him past his rookie contract considering his lack of usage all these numbers don't include the jags game okay so i mean <laughs> not much really changed there um we'll see we'll see it could be, again, it could be one of them Gus Edwards things. Like, hey, dude, hey, we're going we to keep the numbers low. And then come contract time, hey, look, you didn't produce like that. You, you weren't going off like that. So we ain't got to pay you like that, buddy. Next question came from my guy, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just watch us lose to the Jags and all pro Zay Jones. For some reason, we can't stop J Zay Jones. He cooked us last year in that Raiders game and sealed the deal. And now he does it again. But what I really want to talk about is Brandon Stevens. Why do we keep putting him on an island? It seems every game he gets burnt or draws a flag. Like, why isn't Pepe Williams out there? Also, drops killed us once again. But this time, we couldn't overcome it. Yeah, the same thing I was saying. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And I don't know where Pepe Williams is. It's like he's active. He's healthy. I don't know. I don't. And, and he was out there like you, they, they showed they loved him in preseason. Looked like they were loving him. But I guess they just like, you know, we're, we're more comfortable with Brandon Stevens. Uh, so with, with Pepe, well, I don't know what's up with Pepe at all. That's a good question. Next question came from another patron, my guy Plex. He said, shrug. There's absolutely nothing that can be said about this game that hasn't been said in the past. Mm. Repeat offenders. Uh, it's literally the same thing after every loss and even some wins for years. Yes, thank you for highlighting that. Because it's not just in losses. These are things that we've been talking about even when the Ravens win that they need to fix. Anyway. Um, we need a new OC, fire Roman, the philosophy needs to change, Lamar has no weapons, Lamar missed too many throws, get rid of Harbaugh, there's more, but you understand where I'm coming from, I'm tired, I've gotten to the point where I don't care, I'm not getting my hopes up, things will be what they've always been, so it is what it is, my guy Plex said he is officially checked out. 
the Blaine game. Next question came from another patron, my guy JL. He said, Hey, my boy, love the channel. Appreciate it, man. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of blame getting thrown around as a result of the Jags game last weekend. Although I will not participate in it, I would like to state that when you invest most of your money, sign big time free agents. And make big trades for players on the defensive side of the ball. You cannot give up a 75-yard touchdown drive in a two-point conversion to a 3-7 and seven team. With all the treatment this front office gives the defensive side of the ball, they should be able to de be depended on to close out games, period. But what do you think? You're right. You're right. That's where all the money is. That's where the biggest and, and most investments are. So... They should be clutch. All right, so next question, and the last question on this episode came from my guy Nazarene. He said, what's good, big bro? Hope all is well. As a diehard Ravens fan and an unbiased fan at that, I would like to share this article from Russell Street Report with you and the flock. Complete, brutal, and honest assessment of this whole team. Enjoy. Okay, we, we, we can't read this whole thing uh, on question from subs, but uh, we can go through some of it, and, and then y'all can go to uh, RussellStreetReport.com. Uh, it's called Legion of Gloom. These are the John Harbaugh Ravens, and the article was written by Rob Shields, so shout out to Rob. Uh, the first paragraph said, the Ravens are coming off another bad loss. They're now the fifth team in NFL history to have had a lead of more than one score in their first 11 games. The previous four teams were all 11 and 0 through 11 games. Uh, the Ravens, 7 and 4. This is just a horrible stat, and it speaks to so many of the problems with the team. Um, before I get into everything, I will say that the Jags are a better team than people think. Their lines are both pretty solid, and they have been in a lot of games all year. Uh, DVOA has been high on them for most of the year, certainly liking them more than their record. The Ravens are also a team that has been dealing with cold weather and then traveled to a warm weather, and they had an extra delay to deal with yesterday. Uh, how much that affected them is unknown, but I doubt it helped. Top of that, the Ravens recently had a stretch of playing just one game in a three-week time frame and then just had the holiday week, which muddies the practice waters as well. And add that to a few guys being out, a few key guys being out, and Lamar missing some practice time due to illness last week and injury this week. And it's not surprising that the team looked flat in the first half. With that being said, the problems are far larger than that. Last offseason, I wrote a multi-page article on the philosophy of the organization and how I felt it was holding the team back. Hmm. Sound familiar? Uh, I talked about the poor passing game, the reliance on the running game, and how they are more focused on stopping the run and not enough on getting after the passer. It's just an overall uh, archaic way to build a team in today's game. Mm. I've been harping on how Greg Roman needs to go, and I will reiterate, as I did then, that this isn't just a Roman problem, but he is definitely not a solution either. We've seen the same issues over and over, year after year. The passing game stinks. The plays take forever to get in. There's no rhythm or tempo, poor play calling, poor route concepts, and mental mistakes, including penalties. We see very little development of young wide receivers. Lamar Jackson continues to struggle with accuracy and making all the clothes consistently. And what really ma makes matters worse in all of this is that the Ravens have an elite offensive line. Ben Powers and Zeitler have been the best pass protecting set of guards in the league. Ronnie Stanley, who didn't play yesterday, is the best pass blocking left tackle in the game. Even Morgan Moses and Patrick McCary have largely been, largely been above average in pass protection this year. And yet, the Ravens are one of the worst passing teams in the league, according to many metrics, including PFF, win rates, etc. Again, PFF is... They too sometimes, but we get what you're saying. But anyway, I mean, it's he like Nazarene literally sent like the whole article. So y'all can check it out for yourselves on RussellStreetReport.com. But it sounds like a lot of uh, everybody's same complaints, same issues, because a lot of the same stuff just keeps happening. Yeah, this feels like a dream.